Hello and welcome to another video on the Mathematical Fundamentals, a course from Brilliant.org, this North American educational platform for profit founded by or co-founded by Sue King and he presented that idea in 2012 to uh, several capital venture capitalists, angel investors. So Chamat Palihapitiya, a an ex senior executive at Facebook from 2007 to 2011, he invests uh, in this company uh, and also he create a a fund called Social Capital. So the whole point of this is to recognize where these are coming from, who is the founders, how they get the point where they are, so I can now finally is, well, uh, learn this kind of concept. And the value proposition of this course is teaching us the essential tools to mastering things like algebra, number theory, and logic. Why is that? Why do you care about this? Well, glad you ask. Because I want us to improve my analytical, communicational, technical skills, especially on the foundational, uh, the mathematical foundations, uh, so I can solve problems in real time quickly and faster. So I can deliver value to clients as fast as possible using well the web stack or the web technologies uh, in this case with node view 3 and all the technology involved there. so the front end uh, the back end as well as the database and how you can containerize that to deploy that using docker uh, in a way that can run on any machine so if you have, for example, need to hire someone, or if you, for example, uh, buy a new laptop, uh, well, you don't need to actually set up your environment for that. So Docker, by setting this configuration, you only need to install Docker, and Docker will know what to do in order to construct and set up your environment. So. It is pretty much like uh, when you move out. So Docker, what it does is to facilitate this process uh, by saying, hey, put everything here in your backpack uh, or your luggage. Uh, and when you go to that Airbnb in Rio de Janeiro, uh, Miami, Buenos Aires, Tokyo, New York, all right? So you just throw your luggage but in your luggage uh, actually deploy your environment you know you're ready to go you're ready you're set and that's the beauty of this and yes okay so first i look at the generalize here which is the tldr is that the the practice of a lesson or so the practice of generalize a lesson the lesson can be a problem okay so but the practice of generalize a lesson is the core of mathematics it means that the algebra all right so by looking at patterns on the added method by looking at padding on, on the arithmetic or the operations of numbers so we can identify certain patterns that might arise and generalize using algebra and that's the powerful thing and that's beautiful here uh, so then uh, here is when I look at what is this for, for example a lesson or a real life example is what is the sum of the first three uh, first odd numbers? Okay. In other words, it's like what is the sum of one plus three plus five? 
okay so you can calculate each one of them and you get that but the whole point of this generalization is to reduce the amount of time that you have to compute that okay to get the outcome so for that particular lesson or problem you have this generalization and that's fine and that's great another thing is that looking things from different perspectives so changing your perspective is a powerful problem solving in math and in real life so often a problem that can be complicated with the right perspective can suddenly things may can suddenly make things straightforward so for example uh, by looking at the patterns that arise on the mathematical fractions less than one for example fractals and the mathematical of fractions are greater than one the compound interest and if you think number as shape okay you can now uh, when you multiply in by a factor uh, less than or by fractions less than one it remove in a regular way uh, chunks smaller and smaller ultimately producing a fractal and you have things like the Sierpinski triangle uh, and the carpet uh, the, the, the Sierpinski triangle or the Sierpinski carpet okay but the whole point of looking at that is that okay now that I saw this particular pattern what can I do with this? Because it's like, aha, uh -huh, so, 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 give me something that is tangible, man. So something that I can work with, okay? So for that, uh, so as a way to try to give a little bit of perspective and meaning uh, in life, so if you see your life, okay, as a shape, right, as a triangle, and you can, for example, in each one of those triangles, uh, allocate is um, time for relationship, business, and health while leaving this empty space for do anything else, for, for doing things that you can control, okay? So you can now, using this pattern, you know you can multiply this by a factor less than one ultimately producing these fractals and here you can allegedly have much more control about where you're going to allocate your time your family friends mentors career finance assets fitness nutrition and meditation so that's so what uh, an application of this kind of abstract concept so what you can do here is that well by looking at this is to dedicate time okay to things that matter the most so in other words it's like uh, well um you you're now you can see this kind of thing uh, and then you can for example create your own time blocking or your own schedule so things just started to make a lot of sense here so that's just to describe one particular pattern and the other is again if we think numbers as shape uh, if we multiply that by a factor or in this case by a fraction greater than one then we have something called or then we are adding uh, it add chunks in a regular way bigger and bigger each time ultimately uh, producing an next uh, or an infinite growth 
in an exponential way. So the thing here is that with this particular pattern, all right, so for example, if you want to lose weight, so by hiring a capable personal trainer and a nutritional and hit the gym, follow their schedule for three, oh my God, month, <laughs> products an outcome. And this is one of the beauty, and this is, for example, uh, and a lot of people are, um, can say here is that, okay, uh, but would that work for you? And that doesn't work for me. The, the whole idea here is to see that if you're able to, based on the particular conditions and actions and activities, you can now change a behavior. And this is something that uh, Dr. David Sinclair mentioned, right? So 80% is epigenetic, not genetic. Meaning is that the way how you act, or what matters most is what you do and how you do it, has a huge impact uh, rather than what you are. So I prefer that he correct me in that, but in any case. So yes, and this is a bit well that I'm going to dedicate my attention, to dedicate time to the things that I require, like right now, keep track of your progress, test them for an outcome, and then eat headache. So that was uh, interesting here uh, for generalized rethink withdraw. And in this model, we talk about is the relationship between an statement and draw conclusions. So first thing first, I look at uh, by analyzing is an statement, okay, which is here. So by analyzing is an statement. Uh, you can if enumerate all possible answers and then use the information you have to filter down the list or the, the, the logic case and then you have thinking forward so thinking forward is it is a lot of easier to work with true statement so you can understand the clue and then go on to reason about them faster so this is something quite challenging, at least to me, uh, because this is on English. But after all, it is logic. It's logic. It's just logic, man. It's just logic. So, again, this section focus about is the relationship between an statement and a truck conclusions. In other words, logic. But again, the statement and a truck conclusion to solve a problem or practice the mathematical logic here. And logic is an essential part of your mathematical journey as it helps your reason precisely and carefully. When we, when we talk about mathematics, what is the math? Uh, the etymology of math comes from the Greek mathema, which means learning. And another translation according to online etymology, online dictionary etymology, I think it is, online uh, etymology, yeah, online eti, etymo, etym, etymology dictionary, okay. An online etymology dictionary here. Uh, so they mentioned that mathematics, mathema, uh, it also can be uh, translated as that which is learned, what one gets to know. And to me, that was powerful. That was interesting. That revelation is that now, okay, so now we understand is this mathematic word. Okay, so what ones gets to know. And that's interesting because when we born, we didn't know a lot of things. And the, the, amount of, the amount of anxiety that we have to deal is huge, is vast. Especially if you have, for example, 
four years old and then suddenly uh, you were with your mom and now she is no longer or with your dad and he is no longer around so it's like oh my god the fucking hell what else? <gasps> your first reaction is to cry <laughs> okay that's your first reaction uh, most of the time in any case the whole point of this is to now be able to dry your tears uh, and do something about it. So thinking forward and backward is focus on examining the relationship between a statement and a draw conclusions. Okay, so we talk about here to start we will bring logic to bear on a prescient issue. Which of the lights are all in the Sherlock Holmes? Dr. Watson, Mr. Hudson, and Sherlock. So the light is on. Right? So easy work. The next case will take a bit more care. If a light in the row below is off, then the light next to it on, only one light is on. You know, analyzing is a statement. If a light, and again, we're saying that this is a true statement. So if a light in a row below is off, then the next light is on. Only one light is on. So is this. So the only one, so on, only one light can be turned on. So it must be the center light. Otherwise, two lights that are next to each other will both be off. Okay, and this is the reasoning, and the reasoning part here is something crucial when it comes to solve a problem. Okay, so yeah, so if a light in the row below is off, then the light next to it is on, only one light is on. So, okay, you can continue here, and then we look at this. So if if this problem, a couple of statements are already green, like this one. In this pro okay, in this problem, a couple of statements are already green, like this one. Why it doesn't mean why it doesn't it doesn't mean that the statement arrangement what why it doesn't mean that the, the starting arrangement arrangement with no lights with no lights on is correct. At most one light on each at one at most one light white light Jesus at most one light is on in each row. Why? It doesn't mean that the starting it doesn't mean that the starting arrangement with no lights on is correct. Exactly. With no lights on is correct. The statement turn green whatever it is true for the current arrangement. Exactly. So, for the given this condition or this arrangement, the one they've made again, okay, arrangement, arrangement, agreement. Here we are. You're British. I get it. Jesus, arrangement. Okay. <clears throat> or you want to use this polite English arrangement? Okay. Great. Cool. So, what? It doesn't mean that the starting arrangement with no light is on is correct because after all at, one, at most one light is on in each row so the start uh, your goal is to find an arrangement that makes all the statement true at once so at most one light is on in each row not light is on in row b meaning that here we don't have any light the light that is on your, in a row A is not purple. The light that is in a row A is not purple, which means it can be yellow or orange. Okay. Uh, and there are more purple lights on that yellow lights on. Meaning that here and here. So this actually satisfy this condition. Again, what we're doing is just passing line by line 
as long as all of these statements are true okay so how about these lights which are on again all of these statements are true each one light is on in each row okay exactly one light is on in each row exactly one line is on in each row oh i don't know why which one an odd number of yellow lights are on an odd number of yellow lights and on it means that is one or three no more the here of yellow light it means it's one or three okay so the light on in on in a row a is not yellow okay so the light on so the light on uh, the light on in row a is not yellow so it is orange okay there are more yellow lights on that red light so it means that it is, must be a purple or a blue in this case purple or blue uh, there are more yellow lights on the red on that red lights on the lights on in row a and b are the same color so it can be purple and because now the condition says exactly only one light is on in each row exactly one line in each row is, oh, is row and odd number of yellow lights are on it means that this actually satisfy all of these conditions so okay what we did is just pass line one line pa, 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 knowing what is true okay and then uh, pass that so in the last problem, what does the following statement imply? An odd number of yellow lights are, uh, there are either one or three yellow lights. Exactly. There are one or three yellow lights. So enumerate is a possible option. So that's right. It is tempting to guess and check whether it is one or three. Instead, you can keep both possibility in mind okay you you keep both possibility in mind as you read the other statement until you are sure about what's true and this is something interesting it can be quite simple okay uh, and simplicity is the, the simplicity is the ultimate elegance or yep so you keep you keep in mind the both okay so you keep in mind both possibility here when you read each one of those statements okay you keep in mind those possibilities uh, as you read an other statement until you're sure about what's true so after reading this clue what do you know for sure the light on a row A is not yellow. Mm -hmm. That there is one yellow light. Again, from all of this possibility, only one of them is true. Okay. But again, you keep in mind all of these possibilities. In this case, it was only two. All right, makes sense. So yes, you can be sure that there is one yellow light with those clues. There's often no need to guess in problems like this if you use this principle. Enumerate all possible answers and then use the information you have to filter down the list. So this is thinking backwards. And I'm going to write this down again. So thinking in this kind of problem okay in this kind of problem of this logic problems where you have a statement to draw conclusion thinking backwards okay so enum enumerate 
all possible answer and then use the information you have to filter down the list okay I'm gonna do this again a thinking backward so enumerate all possible answers exactly enumerate all possible answers and then use the information you have to filter down the list this is thinking backwards okay uh, thinking backwards so you enumerate all the possible combinations or all the possible answers uh, and then with the information you have you filter out down the list you feel you have to filter down the list okay you have all of these possible answers and then you filter down the list with the information that you have okay again here we're analyzing is a statement okay this is thinking thinking backwards so mr hudson and dr watson are both lying which light is on so hudson it is either the third or the fourth light in the road that's on so if we take a look here at our blog note there you go. Okay. So here we got is this. Mr. Hudson and Dr. Watson are both light. Which line which light is on? Okay, so Hudson say it is either the third. Is either the third or the fourth? It means that if she is lying, then it's not the four or this. So only one, two, and five are on. And then if I analyze the Watson, is Watson both the second and the third lights are off, meaning that one is uh, exactly. Meaning that one is off, two is on, three is on, and four is off, and five is off. Okay? It means that whoever is overlapping here, whoever is overlapping here is true. In this case, the second so the light that's on must be the second light exactly so for this kind of problem it was just straightforward it was easy which is that right so what I did is just to again uh, list all the possible combination or list the possible answer and see in figuring out what's true okay so if you know that the statement both the second and the third lights are off is a lie what's true uh, so the second the, th the second and the third lights are off is a lie what is true both the second and third lights are on exactly so now you're talking here with logic reverse logic so both the second and third lights are on it might seem like both lights have have to be on but there is another possibility if one of those two lights were on the statement that both if one of those three lights were on yeah, well, it might seem like both lights have to be on. 
exactly but there is another possibility uh, and if if one of those two lights were on that the statement that both the second and the third lights are off will still be a lie uh, what it might seem like both lights have to be on but there is another possibility if one of those lights were on except if one of those lights were on the statement that both the second and the third lights are off will still be a lie exactly because again here you're here you're saying that both are so if one of those two lights were if one of those two lights were on the statement that both the third the second and the third lights are off in fact if one of those two lights were on the statement that both the second and the third lights are off will still be a lie exactly because because mm -hmm. so if one of exactly exactly what <laughs> So here I'm looking at this. So it might seem like both lights have to be on, uh, but there is another possibility. If one of if one of those two lights were on, if one of those two lights were on, the statement that both the second and the third lights are off will still be a lie. Yes, because it's not represented. You're not represented because they're both are not exactly because both are not exactly we're talking about here and and or in the previous problem you might have started off by converting the false statement into true one okay by converting the false statement into true one which is something that i did into true one okay which is something that i did what are, what are the true ones okay so what are the true ones exactly uh so you might have to start off by converting the false statement into true ones it is a lot of easy to work with true statement so this step helps you to understand the clue and then go on to reason about them faster that's for sure so this is thinking forward here so it is it is a lot of easier it is a lot of easy to work with true statements okay so you can understand the clues and that's right so you can understand the clues and then go on to reason about about them faster and that's the whole point of this so you go on to reason about them faster keyword here the whole point of looking thing for this perspective so if you have false statement look at the true statements okay uh and then so you can understand the clue and then go on to reason about it faster so this is a particular perspective especially if you have to deal with false statements or statement that start with this false sense okay so any false statements it's much more easy to work with true statements so you understand the clues to reason uh, so you understand the clue and then go on to reason about them faster it is interesting because that's f our brain is like why to understand true statement uh, and this is also something that will take time will take effort will take energy out of it mm -hmm. 
Interesting. So understand, the other is this. So understand the information you are provide and use it to specific to specify a solution. So understand the information you you are provide and then use to spe specify a solution. Okay. Great. So this is now thinking forward. So use this inform okay. Interesting. So thinking backward is enumerate all possible answers and with the information you have filter down the list. Okay? And now with uh, understand the information you are provided, so by turning us all of these false statements into true, okay? So by turning all of these statements into true, okay? Uh, and then understand what are, then understand the clue about them, so you can move on to reason about them faster, that is thinking forward it's to understand the information you are provide to uh, and use to specify a solution to tell a solution. Okay. Okay. So things starting to have a little bit more sense. So in this course, you will learn to think forward. Okay. Meaning is that if you have all the statements, it's much more easy to work with true statements. Understand the clue, uh, so you can go on and reason there about, and you can go on and reason and reason, so you can go on to reason them about, so you can go on and reason and reason uh, and reason them much more faster. So with the information you have provided, uh, yeah. Um, with the information you have, you are, uh, or, or understand. So understand the information you are provide and use it exactly. So understand the information you have provided and use it to specify a solution. Okay, this is thinking forward and thinking backward is like, well, you know what? It is much more useful to enumerate all possible uh, answers and then filter out the uh, interest and then filter out the Jesus. And then filter out the so so enumerate all possible answers and with the information that you have, then filter filter down the list. Mm -hmm. So you also practice working forward, working backward from a set of implication until you narrow down the truth. So thinking forward and backward. By looking for the things you can specify quickly. Okay. Okay. So by looking at the things you can specify specify quickly okay and keeping all the possibility in mind exactly so by looking so by looking at the things you can specify quickly okay by looking at things you can specify quickly Uh, and enumerate, enumerate all possible is okay, all possible answer and keeping all the possibility in mind and keeping all the possibilities in mind. Okay, you can solve problems more effectively. You can solve problems 
more effectively. Again, two things here. Things, uh, look at the thing that you can specify quickly. And this meaning is that, what is the truth of this? What is the fact of this? So look at the thing that you can specify quickly uh, and then keeping all the possibility in mind so you can solve problems more effectively. And when you do this kind of thing, this is something sexy, by the way. <laughs> this is also something sexy. Someone that can solve problems, here it is something sexy. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is, some, it is someone that is attractive. Interesting. A quick question before we wrap up. Do, we, do you think logic problems are a type of mathematics? The premise is this. Uh, do you think logic problems are a type of mathematics? Are a type of uh, things that which is learn yes <laughs> yes things which is learn yes uh, or that what ones gets to know yes so it makes sense that logic here or logic problems are a type of mathematical problems it makes sense it makes sense because this is something that you can learn something that you can learn and as any learning process or as any thing that you are invited to learn you need to put a practice daily in your life as a way to well just like a muscle uh, use it or lose it mm -hmm. all right okay so we agree right and my another in my another reasoning was like if we think shape as numbers we can think is this logic statement or this exactly holy fuck <laughs> we can think is this premise as number as well hmm? A representation here jesus fucking christ i i will argue that bull Boolean logic, Boolean logic. <laughs> okay, I will argue that algebra, Boolean logic here. You were someone advanced. <laughs> Mathematic, English autodidacta, que fue el primero en definirla como parte de un sistema lógico. Inicialmente en un pequeño folleto. Oh my fucking god. So it is funny because the vast majority of these people were, uh, yeah, yeah, come. The vast majority of these people, uh, Lincoln Island. Completely, completely. Uh, mm -mm, that's, that's why we have, that's what you have to be in your purpose, man. That's what you have to be in your purpose. That's what you have to be in your purpose, man. Uh, a shoemaker. A shoemaker. A Mary Ann. He had a primary school education and received you know education here he had a primary school education and received lessons from his father god damn it but with a serious decline in business he had little further formal and academic teaching william brooke a bookseller in lincoln may have held him with latin which he may also have learned at the school of Thomas 
being bridge. He was a self-taught in modern language, in fact. When a local newspaper printed his translation of Latin poems, a scholar accused him of plagiarism under the pretense that he was not capable of such achievement. At the age 16, Bullion became, became the breadwinner for his parents. Breadwinner? What the hell is a breadwinner? Ah, oh my god. <laughs> oh shit. When you are 16, and you have to become is the breadwinner. So things change in perspective, quickly and fast. For his parents and three younger siblings, taking up a taking up junior teaching position in Doncaster at Heyman School, he taught briefly in Liverpool. Bull participated in the Lincoln Mechanics Institute in the Great Fund Lincoln, which was founded in 1833. Edward Broomhead who knew John Ball through the institution, helped George Bull with mathematic book, and he was given the calculus text. At the age of 19, Bull successfully established his own school in Lincoln, Free School Lane. Four years later, he took over Hall's Academy in Waddington, outside Lincoln, following the death of Robert Hall in 1840. He moved back to Lincoln, when he ran a boarding school, Bull immediately became involved in the Lincoln Topo Topographical Society. Topographical Society, he joined in the society. And to me, that is something very, very important that I need to do here. Serving as a member of the committee and presenting a paper entitled On the Origin, Progress, and Tendency of Politism. Politism is different, it's not politism, it's a politism. <laughs> especially among the Asian ex Egyptians and Persians in modern India. Okay, Bull then become Bull become a prominent local figure and admirer of an admirer of John K, the bishop. He took part in the local campaign of early clergy. Mm, Bull's status as a mathematician was recognized by his appointment in 1849 as the first professor of mathematics at Queen College Court. He met his future wife, Mary Everest, was a self-taught mathematician who is best known as an author of all uh, of didact works of mathematics, such as philosophy and fun of algebra. Philosophy and fun of algebra. A progressive idea of edu on education as exposed in the preparation of a child for science, including encouraging children to explore mathematics through playful activities such as curve stitching. Her life is an interest. Her life is of interest to feminism. As an example of how women made careers in an academic system that did not welcome them. Interesting. Mary Everest Bull. You barely hear about her. You barely hear about her. There is there in 1850, while well, she was visiting her uncle John Rail, who was a professor, they married in 1855. He maintained his tie with Lincoln, working there in with A care with A R Larkin in a campaign to reduce prostitution. I mean, uh, yes. I mean, you can do whatever you want as a woman, but the mathematic will help you to increase your value and to respect yourself. That's what happened. That was happened. In 1861, Bull was involved in a judgment in the court of Queen Bench in Ireland against one John Hewitt. Withley of Craig House. In March, oh, holy, is this man? God damn. Exactly. Binary logic. You, my friend, <laughs> you said, you said, oh, holy shit. <laughs> you, my friend, <laughs> 
It is pretty bloody fucked up, man. It is pretty bloody fucked up, man. <laughs> the symbol of our algebra of a logic must follow the special law. As the algebra, the number of... Oh my god, man. It's like... Holy... Fuck. <laughs> man. Oh my god. Jesus... In Christ, man. Working at the Manhattan Project and living in China from 1948 until her, her death in 2010. And living in China? What? She was married to Sid Ace, was an American advisor to the People of the Republic of China. John Joe Hill Hinton was a nuclear physicist. Holy fucking shit. <laughs> Moving to China. Moving to China. When, bro? 1948. Holy shit. Oh my god. She was met John Hinton. Ah, uh, her. Uh, John Hinton. Ah, it is pretty fucked up that she moved there, bro. To China. <laughs> what? To China. What? 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 Anyway. Anyway, okay, come back here, come back here, come back here. So I don't want to dive deep too much in the bullying algebra, but I recognize is the power of relationship. So see particularly patterns, and by looking at things from different perspectives, you can see relationship here to solve problems. So by looking patterns. Something that I'm going to repeat. So by looking patterns. So by looking problems and their patterns. From different perspective. To solve. To, to, from different perspective. By looking at their statement. To draw conclusions. To get conclusions to solve the problem. Jesus freaking fucking Christ, man. Oh my God. <laughs> so logic puzzles are games, not math. Logic puzzle may not be like the math you learn in school, but these puzzles are fun. Are fun. Yeah, are fun break from doing math. Yeah, but these puzzles are a fun break from doing math. They're math. In a fundamental way, all the mathematics boils down to logic. All mathematics boils down to logic. Drawing conclusions from a set of facts based on precise rules. Drawing conclusions from a set of facts based on a precise rule. So through all this course, each new unit of logic will... I think this is something important. Uh, this is something important. So, in a fundamental way, in a fundamental way, all, all the math, mathematics, okay, all the mathematics boils... So, in a fundamental way, all the mathematics boil down to logic. Drawing conclusion from a set of fact based on precise rule. So drawing drawing conclusions from a set of rules, from a set of facts. So drawing conclusions 
from a set of facts based on precise rules based on precise rules again but this is logic and in the real world you have to exchange logic for psychology a lot of the time because your dealing is not only with the nature uh, but also with in most of the time you deal is with people okay you deal is with people so in a fundamental way all the mathematics all of the things jesus <laughs> in a fundamental way all of the mathematics in other words all of the thing you learn okay or what or that what what one gets to know all of the things that which is learned can be boiled down to logic which is drawing conclusions from a set of fact based uh, uh, based on precise rules through all this course each new unit of logic will begin with simple problems and then build up much more challenging case which is exactly what we're doing here okay um, which is exactly what we're doing here so each unit of logic will begin with simple problems and then build up onto a much more challenging case. But again, in a fundamental way, all the mathematics boil down to logic. Drawing conclusions from a set of facts based on a specific rule or a precise rules. But these rules come from nature, from these patterns that we observe and we make generalizations out of it. <clears throat> Jesus, freaking lies. <laughs> um, and here's where things started to get pretty fucked up. <laughs> okay. Throughout this course, each new unit of logic will begin with simple problems and then build up much more chance. In the following three facts, all are true who is the liar in which lights are on one of the three lights one of them one of the three of them are is liar okay one of the three of them are lying so sherlock hudson and watson one of the three of them exactly one of the three of them are lying you got your false you're false or you're false, right? This is all of the possible combinations. Okay. Two of things are being honest. Two of them are being honest. Okay. Honest and honest. Two of them are being honest, okay? So this is the possible combination. Thinking backwards. Thinking backwards. So on uh, uh, enumerate all possible answers here. So enumerate, enumerate all possible answers <coughs> here, okay? So enumerate all possible answers and, ba and with the information that you have, so, you know, enumerate all possible answers and with the information you have, filter down the list, okay? And exactly two of the three lights are on, okay? And exactly two of the three lights are on, okay? So exactly three, exactly Two of the three lights are on. So if the following three facts are all true, who is the light and which lights are on? Okay. So exactly two of the three lights are on. Uh, which are facts. This is the fact. Okay. Exactly two of the three lights are on. 
So in this case, uh, two life moves on, two life moves on, two life moves on. Okay. So my light is off. Okay, so two of the uh, exactly two of the three lights are on. So my light is off. So if you are, if you are, my light is off. So if you're honest, your light is off. Okay, which is one possible combination. Sherlock's lights is on. If you are honest, <clears throat> okay. So if you are honest, here, Sherlock light is on. So it means that uh, this possibility is a contradiction. Because if Sherlock is honest, here, my light is off. Okay. So, in, so if you want to solve this problem fast, Okay, if you want to solve this problem fast, look at look at the the thing that you can find first. Look at the thing that you can find first. So for example, if Sherlock and Hudson are honest, so my light is off, Sherlock light is on. So it means that well this is not. So this is not a possibility. It, contra it contradicts that. So the two of them uh, are lying. One of them are lying. <laughs> you know, one of them are lying. So it discards that. The other is uh, Hudson, or in this case, Sherlock is honest. Uh, and Hudson is lying. So when you look at Watson, my light is off, which is honest. All right. It means that uh, my light is off. My light is off. Shadow log is on. This doesn't satisfy the premise. You say it's not. So honest is not here. So the other is that. Uh, Sherlock is lying, which means their light is on. Hudson says Sherlock light is on, which means she is honest. Okay. Uh, my light is off, which means is honest. So this is uh, exactly two of the three lights are on. Ah, okay. So this is not a statement here. Okay. But, but exactly two of the three lights are on. So this is not working. This is not a possibility. Okay. So what you're doing is just looking at all the possible combinations here. So if Sherlock is off, and then also Sherlock light is on, so she is honest. So the other possible possible combination is that uh, my light is off, which means that you are lying. Okay. And uh, Sherlock is lying, or in this case, is honest. And Hudson uh, is lying, which means their light is on. However, we have two lines here, and allegedly two of them are being honest. So it means that you, if you are honest, Sherlock light is on. <clears throat> this possible combination is this. So Hudson here. Sherlock light is on, she's honest, but Watson is lying, my light is off. 
So Sherlock here for this premise is so Sherlock is honest. Uh, no, uh, Sherlock is lying, which means Sherlock is honest, which means the lie is off. Hudson say Sherlock light is on, which means uh, she is honest, which means it's lying. I mean, that's right. So she, what the hell? My lag is off, which means is uh, Sherlock is lying. One of the three of them are lying, so it means this honest. Okay. Hudson say my light is on, which if you say she is lying, it means this. She, the light is off. If Watson say my light is off. She's honest, but the life must be on. So, in other words, <laughs> in other words, in other words. Uh, and this is something interesting because now you have to do all of these combinations. But for that, you need to be in the present. So, Sherlock, my life is off. So, if you say, if you're true, if you're honest, it means that your life is off. But say Sherlock light is on, so it contradicts that. Okay, so she must be lying. Sherlock light is on, she must be lying. And Watson say my light is off, so she must be honest. So, but that doesn't satisfy this condition. Exactly two of the three lights are on. So, the condition is that each one of those lights must be on, okay? So, my light is off, so you must be lying, so your, mm -hmm. so your light must be on. Sherlock's light is on, so Hudson must be honest, and that is, their light must be on. And Watson must be, must be telling the truth, which their light is off. And this is the correct answer. So, are you ready for the last challenge? And you'll be the hardest one yet. Again, what I did here is just to uh, walk through each one of those statements and to check if they're correct. Using only what the three brief says, figuring out who's lying and who's being honest. Okay. Interesting. So exactly two of the three of us are lying. Okay, so according to them, exactly two of the three of us are lying. Exactly two of the three of us are lines. So the light is off. And here we're talking about is on probabilities. So because we can trust in any of their, you know, because we can trust in any of them, all right? Who is lying and who's being honest? Because like at the beginning, we cannot know who is right or who is wrong. So exactly two of the three of us are lying. Exactly two of the three of us are lying. The light is off. So based on their premise, okay, so you can extract the information that you need, which is two of the three of us are lying so Sherlock must be lying or this so based on this statement mm -hmm, or false 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 or true false false Okay, false, true, false, true, false, false. False, false, true, false, false, true, false. Okay. 
And what is an all possible combination here? Mm -hmm. In all of the permutation. Mm -hmm. But again, this is based on this premise. Okay. And there is another premise, the light is off. Mm -hmm. Exactly two of us are lying. Exactly two of the three of us are lying. Okay, exactly two of the three of us are lying. Exactly two of the three of us are lying. The light is off. So it seems that this con it seems that this condition actually satisfied. Exactly, two of the three of us are lying, based on their premise. If Watson is lying and Hudson is lying, then Sherlock said the light is off, must be honest. It seems that is this, but take another look at what Watson and Hudson are saying. Is what is Watson is saying is true or false, given what you got select right now. Exactly two of the three of us are lying. Two of the three of us are lying. Exactly two of the three of us are lying. The light is off. And for example, if you say that If Watson says Watson say exactly two of the three of us are lying. So if you're honest and if you're lying and if you're lying, so the lie must be true. But if you say exactly two of the three of us are lying, Exactly two of the three of us are lying. Exactly two of the three of us are lying. Which one of you are lying? Oh, okay, it's because of logic. Exactly two of the three of us are lying. <laughs> exactly true. Two of the three of us are lying. If both of you say that uh, two of the names and then, then all of you must be saying the truth. <laughs> uh huh. So hint. Since Watson and Hudson say and mean precisely the same thing, they must either be both honest or both lying exactly. <laughs> And that's what happened here. There must be either both honest or both lying. Okay. Um, uh, so that'll be all for this video. Take care. Bye-bye.